allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Hoskinson, could I have the roll, please? Hicken? Here. Lee? Here. Walther? Here. I'd like to thank the uh, members of the of the committee for uh, adjusting on the fly at the last minute to to make this happen. Um, not a bad day outside. Lots of stuff to do, so I appreciate everybody coming in. Uh, with that, um, I will turn it over to Chris uh, for the agenda, and we'll start with the Mill Street Waterline Project. Thank you, Mr. Hicken. Um, Mill Street Waterline Project is uh, the top thing in your in your package. Just a map of the way the water lines exist now. The second page in red are the uh, connections that we're planning on doing. This is a continuation from a project we started last year. There's a section of six inch main on Mill Street that gives us lots of problems. We have lots of breaks. And uh, right next to that water main is an eight inch uh, plastic water main. It's new and in good shape. We want to transfer base service lines over to the new main, um, loop the six inch main into the eight inch main and um, get that all done before Street Department wants to get it paved. Um, they want to pave it in May or June, so our target for this is the first week of April. Um, just five services that are getting transferred, but to turn the water off in this area to do the work, it's going to be a significant uh, portion of Jefferson Street, um, Mill Street, George, little side streets over there uh, around where the City Hall is. So the plan is to put a notice out. Um, maybe two weeks out, and again one week out, and then the day before, just to tape a notice to each door, just to let them know this is coming. Uh, it will not result in a boil alert. We can directionally flush this, uh, establish good chlorine, and we don't have to do a boil alert. We will take a precautionary bacteria sample. It's not something that the EPA requires, but it's something that we do whenever we cut pipe open just to, to make sure nothing nothing went wrong. But um, So that's, that's basically the plan for that. Just all the materials were purchased last year, and uh, the work will be done in-house using Ventura Brothers, our contractor. So. Who, um, how will you notify the citizens? Are you going to put, send them something, or are you going to knock on doors? It's going to go to every door and uh, take, take a letter right to the front door. That's good. And you said that's along Jefferson and? It's Mill Street between Jefferson and Maine. But the outage will occur? The outage will occur. Uh, it'll be Mill Street, Jefferson, George, Benton, uh, little side streets between. Yep. Between Maine and Township, uh, about from City Hall to Main to uh, Mill Street, will be shut down. For one day, right? Yes, shut down for one day. The project will last about a week, but the uh, shutdown should be one long day. Okay. Any, any questions from the committee? I'm just looking here. Um, so that won't go all the way down. It wouldn't affect, like, the bank and the coffee shop and all that stuff? Down. No. Okay. There's, a, there's a valve... Uh, right between the church and the city hall building on, okay. Jeff on Jefferson is about right there. We can shut off from there. Okay, cool. Towards the middle. No All questions. Right. I don't think there's anything else for that. I appreciate the heads up and uh, the visual graphics to show us. Uh, that moves us into a discussion, a discussion about rate structure. Alrighty. So the next packet that's all bound together is the information I have. Regarding the rate structure, uh, the first little bundle that's stapled together is our current uh, utility rates as they are now. And then the next four pages are the graphs of the funds from Jamie's budget book. Uh, the water fund and sewer fund, and then the capital improvement funds after that. I included that because the, you can see the capital improvement funds are not uh, plummeting the, the way the operational funds are. The exception of the sewer capital improvement fund does uh, drop off. That's to account for the $500,000 each year for the wastewater uh, facility upgrades. But as soon as that comes out, the capital improvement fund starts to climb again. So uh, we're not just, we're not considering a um, rate increase on the capital improvement fee at all, just on the operational fund. The uh, next little bundle to staple together after that, the EPA released a survey in 2017. So this uses 2016's rates but it was the average annual um, water and second page of sewer bills for the state of Ohio from 1990 to 2016. And it shows, it shows the average 
rate increase for every year being right around four. Um, that doesn't mean that everybody does a rate increase at four. Some do no increase, some do a high increase, but the statewide average it looks like it's right around four uh, percent every year. Uh, and then it shows the third page is where our annual uh, water and sewer rates are for an average of five, that's our average is 5,000 gallons. That's what I use for this, uh, in town and out of town. So you can see the in town water rate compared to 2016 state average is a couple hundred bucks less a year um, than the average. The sewer rate is pretty close to, to average um, for the rest of the state. Out, out of town rates, our out of town rates are higher. So they come in higher than the state average uh, on that. But that's just a comparison to the rest of the state. The next little packet are the graphs that everybody has seen. Uh, I think I've handed these out several different variations a couple different times. But these are the different options that we're looking at for the rate increase. Um, the, each graph shows each particular option. The yellow line is the sewer fund. The blue line is the water fund. Option one is a one-time 5% increase. Option two is a one-time 10% increase. Option three is a one-time 15% increase. And option four is three consecutive 5% uh, increases. So that's something that we discussed a little bit at our, our last meeting. Uh, the second page is option five and six. So those are things that have been discussed since then uh, as possible options. Option five is, uh, since the sewer fund was not as drastic as the water fund, we floated out uh, what, would, what would happen if we did a 5% water increase and a 3% sewer increase, uh, then took a year off and did the same thing again in, in 2022. So that's the graph on number five. Option six shows a 5% increase, 0%, 5% increase, and 0% uh, the year after that. Um, so those are different graphs. Another option that was brought up in conversations um, leading up to the meeting was if we did a 5%, 0%, 5%, 0%, and a, a third 5%. Um, I asked Jamie to forecast that was graphs. Unfortunately, the data he has, he, he said he can only go out to 2023. So that option would basically look like option four on the front, only it would take two more years to get to that point. The, the increase would, would you know, take a couple more years to get there. But, um, so those are the six and now seven, uh, seven options that we've discussed on what we can do. Chris, in, in terms of real money for a 5,000, a uh, gallon house, what's a 5% increase look like? Um, so the first 5% increase for water and sewer um, at 5,000 gallons is $3 a month. So then the the next 5% increase would be a little bit higher than three for $3, and then the next one would be a little bit higher than that, um, account for the, for the increase each time. And that's if we did three fives in any? Yes, yes, so yes, if we, yeah, if we did five, it would be $3 the first 5% increase, and then, you know, 5% more than $3, the second, the second increase, and then again on the, on the third one, if that was the option that, that we went. Questions or comments? Yeah, I got a couple questions if you don't mind. On your graph, um, so I'm trying to, you, and I may have missed it, you may have said this, the 5% increase is both to the sanitary and to the water? Yes. So when you look at these graphs, I, I can, and they're in, and they're independent, correct? There's no intermingling of funds, so correct. They're completely separate. Okay. So if you look at the graphs and you start to look to see where does it start to flatline or or at least stabilize, I right. guess is what I'm interpreting it to be. You're really looking at, in my opinion, you're you're looking at uh, per, perhaps uh, graph number four for the sanitary. And that's it's kind of flatlining there. It's getting pretty close there. Maybe maybe graph three. Um, and then for the water, it seems to me like uh, all graphs are showing the water balance increasing. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, it is. Uh, I believe option one is decreasing it might just a little bit. Yeah, right. Little right. But the rest of them do show uh, some increase in the water fund regardless so, of the So if you're reading this, if I'm reading this, I'm looking at it saying, well, if knowing what we know today and knowing what the projects might be, Really, the water isn't as much the issue as sanitary, as far as the fund balance goes. Is that correct? So the 
as, as, as far as the trending of the carryover at the end of the year, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I guess that's what yes. we're that's base, that's what we're basing it on right yes. at the moment. Yes. Um, so would it be, could it be a recommendation? And I know you were saying that this was a discussion that may have happened after the fact about maybe not having an increase on one or maybe having something where you increase once in the water and then you have some multiple increases in the sanitary. The, uh, the, the, any option would be possible, yeah. Okay. We could look at anything. Okay. And, and when you said $3 a month, that is $3 per sanitary and $3 per water or $3 combined? $3 combined okay. at 5,000 gallons. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. I think, I wonder, so as I, and I don't know, Tommy, do you want to say anything before I talk again? No. Uh, as, as I was looking at it, some of it has, and I, 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 I had not looked at the slopes the way Andy did. I, I, I don't know if it's more important, and jump in here, Chris, and let me know, or anybody else. It looks like the carryover maintains a higher balance, even though the slope is, is greater for sewer. That, that is correct. The sewer fund carryover is higher than, than the water fund is. Is there a goal that you like to have? Is it is it is it one point Is it so the uh, the carryover? So fifty percent of the budget is is what we're looking for for the carryover. So I'm not exactly sure what what the actual number is in water for that, uh, what that would be. But that's that was the goal was a fifty percent carryover. The next um, uh, couple sheets are. Stapled together, the, the the tables there show the actual carryover numbers and uh, the percentage that uh, each increase option gets you to. Again, with the exception of option seven, um, which would be similar to option four, only spread out over more over more time. Um, so you can see that the sewer carryover is is pretty high uh, on the end, but I would like to. After going through our EPA inspection and seeing some of the different numbers that I've seen, the I&I uh, &I issue that we have in the sewer collection system is a huge problem. And it's it's uh, something that we're going to have to look at getting addressed. They're probably going to make a re recommendation that we come up with a schedule of some type to address the I&I issue in our permit renewal for this year. So having the um, slightly higher carryover balance it seems nice now, but I think it's uh, almost spoken for. Okay. Timmy, I do have one thing. Go ahead. Were you done? Uh, for now. Okay. Um, one thing that I, I personally kind of like to see is on the ground. Um, so it looks like 5% based off of the blue line levels off and even starts to slope up under pretty much every scenario except one. Yes. So I think the five percent number is right there on the water, um, just based off the graph. No matter what scenario, the five percent does not look like it. It helps the, the sewer, but it's still a decline. Right. Right. I'd be curious to see. So again, five percent seems to be right for water. I'd be curious of what the number would have to be for sewer to make. The orange line look like the blue line because I would hate to have to come back in 2023 or 24 and go we're still losing like if we're gonna do a rate increase and, and it might be 15 I don't know but I just kind of feel like we should at least look at what it would take to at least flatline I don't know what that number is. To flatline the, the sewer fund? Yeah, the I, I just, I, I'm not comfortable with the with raising rates and it's still not being right. good enough. If we've got to increase rates. So you can, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm just saying if we've got to increase rates, I think we'd at least want to flatline it. At right. least, or, or not bring it, start ticking it up like water. So at that, if you look at the graphs, uh, it looks like 15%. Uh, option three on the sewer comes about as close as any of them to flatline the sewer, the sewer fund. Um, so uh, to have them both do the same, it looks like we would we would have to look at maybe a five percent water and a seventeen to twenty percent uh, increase in sewer. At well, that at that point, it starts to 
just sounds like a big number when you but when you get upset with your point. I'd be more interested in in hearing the dollar amount than the percentage. That's what this, if you look on here, you, the, the bill at five thousand. That's what I was just figuring out. What where you get to? Look at your yeah, did, like six column you, over seven. Col look at the sewer and then look at your bill at five thousand. So it's fifty four thirty eight. At fifteen percent, we're adding eight eight dollars and sixteen cents. So I was just adding that into the fifty four. 38, because that's exactly where I was heading. Where would that put us in the ranking, I guess? Yeah. And that puts us at uh, $62.58, which would put us at number, well, it put us at number, uh, let's see, I'm looking quickly. Uh, Southwest Lincoln's still at 73, and we'd be very close to what Lancaster is, is uh, invoicing. So we'd be at third. One. We'd be at third, if if 15 percent on the on the sanitary. Just sanitary side, water. We're already pretty. We're we're we probably added five percent onto the thirty-seven fifty. So five percent is going to be a dollar sixty. So you're going to be at thirty-eight, thirty-nine dollars on water. So thirty-nine and sixty-two plus thirty-nine is going to be one hundred one. And so you're you're in third. You're basically third. Right. You got you got Lancaster, Southwest Licking, and then us. Right. So you're, you're pretty much in third. So I mean, you're pretty much in third no matter which. Yeah. So you're pretty much in third no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. it, it it seems like we would have to, and I know it's five and five, and I'm looking at the option four where it's uh, I get it's the. If we were going to have to do something like this, I wouldn't think we'd want to chunk it out at the beginning, but maybe. So, my thought would be if that number is around fifteen percent, sewer. Right. And I'm not just saying once. It sounds like it's going to take it's going to take 15% just to get water to do that. So let's say the number's 30 for for sewer and 15 for water up front or spread it out. If that were the case, I'd like to see the option. I guess you could call it option six or option seven, where we added that, where we took the year off and but added the, the third year back in. So five oh five oh five. What what if we did to try and level out? And I, I'm not saying that we should do this. I'm just saying I'd like to see it. Right. If you took option six and added twenty twenty four five oh five oh five. Right. But in the zero years, you added five percent to just sewer. So five and five year one, five sewer only year two. I, I understand. So it basically be. You'd be doubling your sewer. In your year off, you would only increase the sewer. sewer rate. And that would get you up to that number. That's, a, that's very interesting. That's, that's definitely something that... Uh, it's a big chunk. I it. don't know that we need to do that, though. If, if you look at four, four is just, is, is just about getting flat. And that is without... Or I'm sorry. Let's look at six. That's without that extra five. Yeah, I'd like to see if if that extra five, and I realize that Jamie can't draw the graph for it, but first of all, my, my first question goes back to my original statement, which is, do you want the orange line to be where the blue line is in terms of millions on the left-hand side? To where each phone would be equal. Yeah, do you want them to roughly be at the same point? And that would tell me that we have more time to implement it. So, so there's no necessity to add, you know, as, as it falls and as the blue line comes up, do they, is, is a million a good target? Um, I, I don't know necessarily what the answer to that is. I, I think it's more palatable to do the 50505. I don't, I think it's easy to explain to people that one year you're going to pay three dollars and it's, it's three three even on five thousand three you know your your your, your monthly bill is going to go up three dollars a month in 2020 2022 and 2024 and that would hopefully even those lines have a carryover be right and we don't have to accelerate anything on the in-between years well, maybe, maybe the answer is to do what you did in option five, only we say it's 
5% water and 8% sewer to get that number to, to, to at least flat or to get that, that sewer to not decrease. Maybe, maybe it's a comp, it's not the same number because it just looks to me like we need more sewer money than we need water over time. Would you would you still consider rolling it out the same way? Like, yeah, roll, go. Like eight and five, zero, eight and five, zero? Yeah, you could do it any way. I mean, if taking that break's important, just do what you did in five, only make the sewer number higher than 5%, because it looks like 5%'s right, when I say 5%, it's really 15 but five over the three, three five. increases. It looks like that's right on point with water. I just, I'm not comfortable with having the, we're gonna have to do something with sewer because it's declining. Now, let me ask this question. Why do you think sewer's declining? I thought it would be water. Why do you think that slope is there for sewer? I mean, this is obviously operational, so it doesn't have to do with putting sewer plants in the ground or anything. No, it doesn't. Um, so I, I, I don't know. That's a that's something I don't know. I'd have to sit down with Jamie and, and um, try and understand the forecast numbers a little bit better. Uh, does that make sense? What I'm? No, it does. It, it's just I, I want to make sure we're relying on the on the slope and what we need. I'm, I, I I get it. If if our goal is only to make them both level, or slight tick up, or slight tick up, then clearly. You need to you need to do something to the sewer fund. Who knows? Maybe you go. Is water going? Yeah, I mean water is going up on number six. It's going up on all of well. I guess my question would be: What if you went five o five o and then just sewer on the third five? Because under option six there, that 5050 has water going up. You address the water slope, but you haven't addressed the sewer slope. It's still coming down and actually pretty bad. I, I think it's just play with the number. I, I think, um, I, I see what you're saying, Timmy. So you're saying kind of maybe drop off that last five for water. And, and, and yeah. But I, I, I just, I couldn't feel, I definitely see there's a need for increase. And I really like the water line. I just don't, if we're going to raise rates, let's do it and, and, if, and let's fix it now instead of right. kicking the can. In my opinion. So I'd just like to see the numbers. I couldn't get behind this necessarily just because it's coming down pretty drastically. So it, I think we just need to look, see, see what that number is. So I would like, I'm sorry. Uh, I'd like to see percentage, just one last thing. Percentage, yes, because you see 30%, everybody's like, oh my gosh. But at the end of the day, it's like three bucks. I'd rather see them both. And if we have to sell it, I'd sell it by how much your rate's going up a month, amount. not by the increase. But that's all for me to hear. So. so I would like to point out that the, um, the, the problem with not having the graph uh, forecast out 2024, option six is the one that shows the year off in between, which I think is, is very palatable to do something like that. But the graph itself would look a lot more like option uh, four, where yeah. it, it's still declining, but um, it's not quite as drastic as option six because that last 5% increase is not shown on, on option six. So the it would be stretched out longer. We the, the graph would still look like it does here, only it would take a couple more years to get there. But sewer so is still declining um, in any of the graphs. So. And, I, and I don't necessarily have a problem I guess I don't necessarily if we modify these rates and we would whatever we put in whether it's 15 percent this year or 50505 or whatever it happens to be and we're seven years out and it might be time to revisit the rates just be I mean meaning the slope continues but it, it, it gets so so almost straight line that you know that it's a while before we get there again I don't necessarily have a problem with that um, and I don't know that I want them both going up which I don't think we want I mean I don't know maybe we do maybe we know that there's a bunch of operational costs coming our way and the only way to survive is to have them both going up but I don't I don't think I've heard that 
see what uh, I, I, I take that to the committee. And see I mean, what you guys may, think. I, maybe it doesn't have to go up as much as four, but maybe it goes up as much for. I don't know. My, I, maybe I think in my head the number I think would come out would be more like a, a five water and an eight sewer. Three years. With a year off in between, it's kind of what my. And I'm not I, think, I think yeah, that was going to be the last thing that I said is I think I think if you tell the public we'll, rates are going to go up slightly, it's going to be five dollars or three dollars or whatever it happens to be, and the way we structured it, there'll be a raise and nothing, a raise and nothing. I I think that's power more palatable to the citizens as long as we're not hurting the funds, as long as we're not hurting ourselves. And we don't have to tell them that's the plan, and then in three years come back to them and go, no, we're going to raise it all 15. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm, yeah. um, just making sure I understand this, this um, the fund rates, do you know offhand what Jamie's using for labor, for, uh, for the, um, um, is it a 3% increase per year? What, do, you know what he's, do you know what he's assuming for the labor rates? I don't know exactly. I haven't discussed them. I, I would imagine that's a pretty good number, but I don't know. I can find out. Uh, I'll ask him. So if those if those fluctuated dramatically, for instance, uh, it would definitely make a difference. It would make a difference. So yeah. I wonder if I mean I don't think this. I know our goal is to come to an agreement as a, as a council on that on this this year, and then begin the PR process of rolling it out. But I wonder if uh, we might be able to have him take his best shot at. At the uh, 580, 580, 580, give us that draft. And maybe if he can consult a Ouija board and try to take his best guess at what 2024 might look like, and then also <coughs> invite him to the next utility committee meeting and ask that question. I would I'd go ahead and have him maybe look at the, the balance and say, Jay, put a guess towards, uh, you know. What may what we might see is increase either in staffing requirements or uh, wage increases. You know, kind of get an idea what that might be over that next five years, so we can really see where this line goes. Because the worst thing we can do, I think, is I think what Tommy's hinting at is, you know, we put we do the we stabilize it, and then we see some kind of increase in staff or increase in rates or wages, and it then dives down again. And that that would be the wrong thing to tell the public. I agree. So that's, so that's, I guess, I'm looking at it from, trying to look at it from yeah. both sides, and I think that's what you're saying, Tim. Yeah, I think, and I think we're not so time critical on this subject. Absolutely, right. That, you know, we can definitely do that at the next meeting, and, and then we can move forward from there. Hopefully we've, we've taken multiple requests at getting as much information and data as we possibly can. And so, okay, we will, uh, I'll give an update at the, the council about that so they know some of the things we're talking about. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we'll also look at coming back with those requests and maybe invite Jamie to the next one in case we get a hair trigger question on, you know, what, do you, what are you using for how many people or what are your, typically what goes into your calculation? And he might, might, might also answer my question better for why is the sewer slope greater when that is typical treatment stuff? And I don't think that is... I mean, is, it may be a simple answer, or maybe that's our best guess. One other part to that is, you know, the income side of it. What's he, what's he assuming for the house rooftops being built per year? Um, that type of thing. We know how many roofs are, are approved in Patasco at this point, and, you know, some type of absorption rate where if we're adding 300 rooftops per year in the, in the, um, water and sewer uh, area, then that, that's obviously going to throw some numbers together differently. Absolutely. Right. So. Good. Okay. Uh, Tim, is there, any, is there anything you'd like me to include in the council packet regarding rates? Um, this no, week, I think it's probably, and I'll bow, it, I, I'll bow to everybody's suggestion on this, but I think it's better to wait until we vet it as much as possible and then hand it to council. So I think there's a couple of variables that we just asked that, right. that I think are going to be really important to understand. Yeah. So. That and also we, and I mean, in the end, if we give them a couple of different ones and we say, look, our, our best belief on this is option four, 
Um, but if you begin to give out stuff early, I think, number one, it serves no purpose because it could change. And number two, you could just get them thinking about stuff and pretty soon you get somebody thinking that it was supposed to be 15 this year when really we reject that out of hand. Um, yeah, I just, I, just to kind of recap everything, I think, um, just to put it out there on the table for everybody, is the needs there. I just, I personally need to get comfortable with that, that sewer side. I'm fine with the water, but because of all the things we just talked about. So if I could see that flat liner tick up, I, I, I could, and again, the dollar, the dollar figures are more important to me than the, than the percentage. Agreed. Yes, I'll, I'll put uh, up a vote on everything moving forward. It'll make it a lot easier, it makes sense. Okay, I think that's great. Excellent. Uh, that moves us into biosolids project. Uh, okay, the, the biosolids portion, uh, last little stapled uh, packet in the folder is uh, two things. The first page is the quote and the services uh, provided by Agri Sludge, and the second bundle is the uh, contract as reviewed by the law director between Agri Sludge and the city, should, uh, should we decide to go that route. Uh, so just to put some, some background out there, um, there been some discussions about this. The biosolids program was run in-house in, in years previous. Um, we have had some em employee turnover. It uh, lost some, some skill, a CDL driver, and some um, farming skill that uh, we no longer have. So I started looking for an alternative uh, to doing it in-house and uh, landed on agri-sludge. We've used agri-sludge in the past for hauling to the landfill when we couldn't land a fly. Um, and, uh, uh, the previous director used Agri Sludge to set up the biosolids program to begin with. So they went out and found him, um, Mr. Sutherland's Fields on Wilsner Road, and got those approved. Um, so they're they're familiar with our program. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, they have asked for a, a two-year contract uh, with three individual options. After that, to pick up, um, they offered a price of twenty-seven fifty, twenty-seven dollars fifty cents per wet ton. To do the land application process and $56 per wet ton to go to the landfill. Uh, going to the landfill is just simply taking it to the landfill and doing the paperwork required for that. The land application process would be coming to the plant, hauling it to the fields, um, applying it to the fields, and doing the EPA paperwork required with that, and then giving that paperwork back to the city where we would submit our uh, annual sludge report to the EPA. Uh, Agri Sludge did come recommended from Betsy Van Warmer. She's the EPA rep of the Biosolids program. Um, when, I, uh, when I spoke to her about different options that we had, she recommended using them because they have a good reputation with them on following their guidelines and all the tracking that, that's required. So, um, so that was a that was a route that I found very attractive and wanted to go with. We we have a. In the contract, we have a cap of 24000 a year based off of the previous three years of what we produce wet ton-wise is 860 wet tons, something like that. It worked out to 23500 just under 24000 The new press should decrease our wet ton amount because uh, it should make drier, drier solids for us throughout the year. So the price should come down a little bit, not drastically, but a little bit uh, from that 23500 um, but yeah, that's uh, so I've got a couple questions, and I think I think we all may. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with uh, the the contract itself, the twenty four thousand dollar cap on the contract. Did you calculate the eight hundred and seventy like it was being put into the landfill? No. The contract is only for the purpose of land application. So that was the goal, is to not send anything to a landfill and to uh, to land apply everything. If something should happen, anything from, I don't know, are we setting ourselves up for trouble if we get into a situation where we have to landfill apply it? Or, or landfill, take, I, I'm the last person that wants to take it there, so I'm, I don't like that. But right. If Agri Sludge is giving us that option, and I don't know, but let's just say uh, we lose the field, either it changes ownership or who knows who knows what. We can talk about that in a second. Um, at 24, we would be short. 
we would be short on the year. Uh, we would have to we would have to do a, um, a reassessment of things, or we would have to do a one time uh, transaction outside of the contract, much like we do now when we all to the landfill. There's no contract now. He'll he'll do one on one. Uh, one-offs, I guess. Okay. Um, so if we got into a bind, we could do that. But uh, if we lost the land application process, we would definitely have to reevaluate the contract because the amount would be too large. The second comment I would have is when I first read this, I read this as AgriSludge always took our sludge to a field and we put it in. And now AgriSludge is quoting us the 2750 to take it to a field. And if they don't take it to the field, they take it to the landfill for 56. And that's not true, right? Correct. They, they didn't do any of this before. Correct. We both moved it. Did they ever move it for us? They did move it for us uh, last year. They uh, obviously they have bigger trucks than we do, and it was taking, uh, we were using the, uh, the one truck we have was able to haul about eight tons of load um, and then their trucks were able to haul 20 tons a load. So as they were as we were going out and hauling it to the field, one of the problems that you have is one, it has to be done with in line with what the farmer needs, uh, and two is the weather. The weather really throws a wrench in things because you can't apply if it's going to rain. 50% uh, forecast of half an inch within 24 hours, you have to stop applying. So as we were driving it up there eight tons at a time, we realized that we were getting behind. Um, so we hired AgriSludge to haul up and, and uh, catch us back up again. But at that point, all they did was haul. They didn't do any of the application or anything like that. And we have used, so after, um, at the end of last year, in the fall, we didn't do any land application. Everything did go to the landfill, and AgriSludge did all of that uh, for us. They, they came in, hauled everything to the landfill. The best quoted point. price is to take it there, apply it, sample it. Yes, sir. This quote, they'll do. The EPA form. Absolutely everything, with the exception of sampling as it leaves the plant, is on us. And um, the reporting to the EPA is on the generator. They, they treat it a lot like toxic waste. You made it, it's yours forever. So yeah. all of that responsibility does fall back on us. Um, of course, being able to lean a little bit on his reputation in the industry is nice, but the responsibility still falls back on, on the city for a little bit. Okay, let's kick it open to other questions. I've got a couple. Um, we talked about this yesterday, so you brought me up to speed quite a bit, and um, I think I think it's important for the entire committee to know one thing that that kind of um, is appealing to me about this. Kind of is not the right word. It is appealing. Is how many man hours it saves you. While it, I didn't realize how many. Basically, they can haul two and a half, almost two and a half loads to your one and how many days and hours that in wear and tear on equipment that we own that we were putting into this that you can that you can't really put a dollar figure on that that you can now reallocate to get other things done um, I think that's a that's a big uh, plus here um, I know we talked a little bit about um, having the farmer apply it and um, I think that there's a lot of farmers that would be interested in this, but I think it having that farmer apply it, or having farmers apply it, there's very few that could do it the way the EPA requires it. Small farmer, I couldn't do it the way they require it. I don't have the GPS, I don't have all that. Maybe, I'm sure Bobby Carr does, but there's might be one or two of those, you know, big time. Right. I would say anybody that's currently using the chip of manure out of Hartford probably has the GPS that could meet the EPA requirements. I also wonder too is if that farmer, regardless if they have the equipment or not, if they are not meeting the requirements of the EPA, who does that fall back on? Does that fall back on the farmer or on the city? Not at all. It falls back on us 100%. So I get it. There'd probably be a considerable savings to have the farmer apply it. I have the equipment apply it, but I can't apply it with my equipment the way the EPA wants it done, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And I think that would apply to a lot of farmers. And I'm small time. Um, so I, I think that um, 
with all those things being said, I'm, I'm, I'm for it. Um, and I don't want to see anything more than a landfill. Yeah. And, um, you know, again, I, I, I think that it's a good program and I just, I think it makes sense. So. And, okay. Um, I will tell you, I've got uh, many concerns here. And, and I don't want you to take this as negative. I'm just going to be upfront and honest. Uh, what I found out from the farmers, uh, you know, doing some investigation on this, uh, what I remember and recall from, from dealing with Nate on this and, and uh, the equipment that we purchased and, and how this was sold, and, and sold is probably not the right word, but how council believed this was a good program for the city to do and the monies that it was saving uh, the city. And I remember a $48,000 number. I don't know if that's the right number, the wrong number, but that's what I recall. Um, so, and that was essentially for hauling into the landfill and paying the landfill price for everything, right? That's, that's right. what I remember. That'd be 48, yes. Um, so essentially, and I think that was in your original email a couple of months ago, um, saying that this was gonna cut into that, you know, quote unquote savings. Um, but essentially it's just reducing the cost that we had. I, I guess I look at it, if something's 15% off, it's still, 85% cost, right? right? And it does, and my wife tries to sell me on that, it doesn't work. Um, she tries her damnedest. Um, except for at Kohl's, I don't know how they do that. You get, that's it's that. free there. Only. It's they're good with their sales. Kohl's is a term name. Kohl's is free, I don't know how they do it. Anyhow, um, so my concern is we've spent quite a bit of money um, on, on the application uh, equipment. I don't remember the exact number, but I do remember it was uh, high, hotly debated uh, at council spending that money um, that really wasn't that long ago so I mean I don't know if we've you know, as a small business person I look at capturing the depreciation of value of the, of the equipment I don't know what it's worth right now to, to go out and try to sell it back to capture that money back I don't know if anybody's even suggesting to do that um, at this point so that's kind of one bucket of comments the next bucket of comments is um, I find it interesting that this count that this proposal came in on December 17th and the email you sent to the cars was on the 14th of December. So the cars are telling me that that you know this is they got their email on Friday. We get this proposal on on Monday. So I don't know how much time everybody had to really talk about this and really work with the farmers to get something to work out. Right. Not accusing anybody of doing anything wrong, I'm sure. It's just a matter of timing and getting stuff done. Everybody's busy. But um, so I, I look at that from the outside looking in. I get concerned about that. Um, the other thing I will tell you, and you know Bobby, I mean, he's just a straight shooter. He doesn't, he doesn't, and I ask him to be uh, very honest with me. And what he said, you know, when I talked with the city about this, you know, the email was such and the discussion that he had was such was it was one way, this was the only way it was going to happen. There was no discussion. There was no, he'd love to participate in it, although, and, and I'm not a farmer, so I don't know all the, uh, the uh, nitrogen and, and, uh, and certain points that they talk about, but basically chicken manure is better than human manure. That's all there is to it. It has better, whatever, nitrates. Or no, I'm not gonna go to the weeds on that. Okay. I'm a small timer, but yeah. But, right. but it's something, yeah. whatever. He said, so, you know, really, if, if he is, if he is given the option to come get it, spread it, test it, do all those things, basically do everything that the email asked him to do, it's not worth it to him. Right. He'd rather do chicken manure. Right. Um, so my question is, getting to my question, my question is, is there a middle of the road somewhere? Um, because he, show, he thinks there's value to it. He thinks that it's, and he totally agrees with the city that don't take it to a landfill. Right. This is ridiculous. Don't take it to a landfill. He's a reusable, he's a farmer. Right. Right? Use everything until you can't use it anymore. Um, but my question is, did we explore at least the middle of the road? Um, and I hear Tommy's concerns about, did the farmer do it right? Uh, you know, what happens if they fail, whatever. Uh, those are all, op those, we could do the same. We can we sure. can do it wrong too. I mean, it's just right. that way. But, but and I'm going to go one step further. I talked with Terry Sutherland, and he said he had no conversations. He had no, nobody tried to get a hold of him at all. And, and I know in your email you said that you, or at least I saw in the email to the cars that you tried to get a hold of him. Yes. You couldn't get anything back. Yes. He said he's never heard from the city, ever. 
about this. And he's absolutely interested in helping with the city, doing whatever he can, um, you know, to, to find a middle of the road. Again, right. Right. it's not as valuable to him, you know, do all of it, but certainly wants to participate and be part of the um, part of this program. They all feel it's a great program. I think just the same as, as as the council felt it was a great program when Nate brought it to us. Right. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of the of the discussions about labor and how much time it takes, but at the same time, um, I understood it that it was one person kind of running the show from the city's point of view, one person kind of running the show, making everything happen, a, a past farmer or a wannabe farmer or whatever was taking care of that. Well, is it so impossible to find somebody that can be able to do that? I mean, I, I, I'm rambling here on my question, but this, these are my thoughts on it. Right. Um, so Terry, like I said, Terry said that uh, his only contact was in the middle of December, he got a call from Agrisludge. That's who he got a call from. And they were asking him if, he, if they could spread it on his field. That was it. He's, and he didn't know why they were calling him, um, in essence. Right. So I just want to throw that out there, Chris. I don't know. I'd, I'd like to, yeah. I've had, this is one side of the story, mm -hmm. so I'm kind of putting it out there. And I told both of them that I wanted to bring this up and be full disclosure. Absolutely. You know, this is what they are telling me. They said, please do. We want to work with the utility department, but we don't want to be the reason, we don't want to be the reason that they don't work with us. Does that Absolutely. make sense? Um, okay. And lastly, can I go two more? I have two more. And lastly, you know, we just talked about raising rates. You know, $50,000 goes a long way in the sanitary yeah. world, um, obviously in rate structure. And I read through this and I think that it, it I, I wonder in the back of my head what gives AgriSludge the incentive to go spread it on a field when they've got a rate in here to take it to, a, to the landfill. I'm worried about that. And, and I would pull, I, I point that out. Um, and one last thing, I will be recusing myself from from any vote on this. I haven't talked to Agri Sludge, but I've done work for Agri Sludge in the past. Um, my brother-in-law is their in-house counsel, so I will tell you that, I mean, I am adamantly opposed to doing this, only because I want to work with the local farmers. I think that Nate had a great, pro I think you guys all had a great program to do this and save money and, and reapply this to local fields. I thought it was a fantastic, it wasn't all great and you know warm and fuzzy about buying a bunch of equipment, but after we made that investment, it seemed to make sense, right? right. Um, so just giving you full disclosure there also that I, I'm gonna have no say in this um, because I can't, I've got a conflict. So I'll just leave it at that. Tony, uh, keep it. Can you hold that for a sec? Absolutely. Andy kind of just asked seven questions. That I did. I'm sorry. Wrapped up in a bow, and I don't know if we, if if it's short, go ahead. I just don't want Chris to lose his response while we wait. But go ahead. Yeah, what Andy's saying makes total sense. My concern is, is I, and and this may be what you were getting ready to say, is we're so far behind, and I'm assuming that you're getting backed up down there to the point where it's so wet right now, and. Fertilizer, I can tell you right now, I just talked to my to my people at the mill that apply my fertilizer. They got one farm fertilized last fall. It is going to be a free-for-all if it even gets done this spring. So with that being said, I, I'm worried that, I, I agree with everything you're saying, Andy, but I'm worried that nobody's going to be able to get to it this year, and we're going to get backed up, and then we're going to be sending it to the landfill. I, I was going to, and that's a great point. I was even going to say, I'd rather pay the farmer. So I'd rather pay a farmer than pay a corporation. I agree. And it's, I mean, that's just the bottom line. If we could if we could help them help us, I'm all for that. And if we got to cut into some of our quote unquote savings, or as I look at it, spend a little bit of money, um, I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm good with that. That's, that's my opinion. Yeah, and I think tobacco, you're right, 100%. But to get that. To so where farmers. Let's see what they can do. I mean, fair enough. I think I just Bobby don't and think, I think you're can send find, trucks and let's go do it. I, I that would be optimal, but I think you're going to find that, and, and I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. There's, it, it's they're so backed up, and you can't you can't get in the field right now. Next week, maybe. Maybe frozen. 
but you've only got so long to apply it. I know. That's you've true. got a time frame. I know. That's application. true. I, I, I know. All right. So, so let's let, yeah. let's let Chris right. answer, yeah. answer the. I'm not playing farmer. Yeah. I don't want to play farmer. The discussion's not Go ahead. So I'm going to try. If, if, if I forget something, please remind me of it. But uh, uh, just to hit, since it was the most recent thing, the, the timeline, if we, if we go with a field that is not already EPA approved, we have to go through that process. And from what Betsy was telling me, that's a three to four month process. So if we don't go to Sutherland's fields, uh, I believe I believe Nate got another field um, approved that's smaller. But if we don't go to Sutherland's fields, we're four, three to four months uh, behind the eight ball on that. Which doesn't mean we can't do that moving forward, but the Sutherland fields are attractive for right now. We've got about three weeks of storage left that we can do uh, before we need to figure out where we're going to put it. If we do go with Sutherland field because it's already approved, we can store on site, and Terry has a pull off right after the driveway. You can store on site for three months, as long as you don't spread it, as long as it's in a pile. You can store for three months before it has to be spread. That'll get us through um, application season. Um, so, so that's what makes the southern fields uh, attractive. The the relationship. I like to go back to the relationship um, with Mr. Sutherland. We I, I spoke with Nate a little bit. So a lot of this was transitioning as I was coming up. And uh, what Nate led me to believe was that the relationship had soured as we lost the employee that uh, did our farming operations. Um, he also did not have any contact information for Mr. Sutherland other than an address. So my contact to him was to, to send him a letter. Um, that, was, that was basically all I did was send him a letter. And when he, I didn't hear back from him, I was under the impression that the relationship was already soured. Um, so, just, so just to just yeah. to let you know, I can I can have Terry call you in five minutes. Right, and that's I'm great. just letting you know that that that's great. I have, no. a, I have a, I work with Terry on other things, and um, he did not mention anything to me that he was against Patasla in any way, shape, or form, and that would like point. to participate in the program. That misunderstanding is disappointing. That that's not the uh, impression that I had. Again, not the You're in transition. Stuff, we understand. Right. Yeah, right. Not, understand. So, um, but yeah, I, I, would, I would love to get his phone just just to so I could contact him. Um, the conversation I had with Mr. Carr was, was very friendly. He's a very nice guy. He's a very straightforward guy to talk to. And uh, when I sent him the nutrient breakdown, I did not hear back from him anymore. I yeah, talked to him about a couple times. Breakdown. After the nutrient breakdown, I did not hear back from him anymore. And I should have followed up more than that. You said that. The date was December 14th. It was right at the holiday season, and uh, I dropped it. And it's it's possible that he didn't think about it again during the holiday season and didn't come up until later. So, so I feel like I, I could have followed up more with him. Um, but I, I'm disappointed that the impression was I wanted all or nothing. Uh, of course, I'm I'm open to any anything that we can do to get the job done. So please uh, understand that's Bobby's I'll words, and he's just being and straight up. He's just being. If that's problem. what he felt, then that's definitely what he felt, because you're right, he, he wouldn't say it if he didn't feel it. So I'll take the ownership on not coming across as open as I, as I should have been with him. Um, where we're at at this point, not that using Mr. Carr's fields would not be a great benefit to us in the future, but before spring, we won't be able to get him uh, the fields approved for our product in time. Um, so the AgriSludge quote coming at the same time, I, I, sent, I did all of this at the same time. I, I sent the letter out to Mr. Sutherland, I called Mr. Carr, and while I was waiting to hear back from them, I thought, well, I'll see what Agrisludge can do as a, as a um, option C, just in case option A, which I assumed was not gonna work out, and option B didn't work out. So I wasn't trying to, it wasn't that I waited three days and then went forward, I was trying to do it all at the same time to have three different options to look at um, with that. The, um, the equipment that we have, uh, we still have still have the tractor, it still, still runs fine. We use it for loading, and uh, we are going to use it to uh, mow our well fields. Right now, the street department's doing that for us because we don't have um, we didn't have a mower before. So, so we are still going to use it. Um, the, uh, the the spreader, I think, is the right term for for the trailer that spreads, is in it's in pretty rough shape. Uh, my understanding is we got it used, and um, our previous employee spent. Most of his time that he wasn't at, at the field welding it back together, uh, keeping it going along. So, so it's not great, but the tractor is. The, there's, the tractor is a nice tractor. Um, so we still have that. We still plan to use that. Uh, maybe not for, if, if we went this route, we wouldn't plan on using it for the land application other than haul, uh, loading uh, the trucks as they came in. 
and I, I feel like I'm missing some questions that were that were asked. Yeah, I think so. We're under a time constraint before it has to go to the weight room, and that's super expensive. You got about three weeks left. Yeah. But Bobby Carr's out this year because of the time it takes for the EPA. So you've got Sutherland's and maybe another small field. Right. And that that's enough land for what you have, right? Yes, yes. Sutherland's fields can, can take everything. So my question would be, could, when you talk to Mr. Sutherland, since he's still interested, I, I know Bobby. I don't know Mr. Sutherland. I, I know of him, but I, I've never met him. If you walk in, I would know. Um, I don't know what his capabilities are as far as hauling. Um, maybe he can, maybe he can't. He can. So He's got the same kind of trucks and tractors left. Okay. So that, that, that problem's done. Right. Could we, if he doesn't have the equipment to apply it, yeah. he does. So that, those questions are answered. Could we pay him to do it, or work out some kind or of deal? Or work out that, a deal, that or maybe something. Maybe he's 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 taking a load. You're taking a load. I'm just. I think there's a cooperative uh, way of doing this that maybe relieves a little bit of your of the of the of the labor side of it, right? Uh, and and puts some of the um, onus on on the end user. Maybe we pay him a little bit to do that, and and we go forward. And then we get Bobby, I, I agree with you, get Bobby We're just uh, under a certified. time constraint before, we've got right. three and a half weeks. Right. So we have to figure out, we either have to do this agri sludge for 27,000, or it's gonna be 50 some thousand in three and a half weeks if we can't get it out of there. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right, well it, 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 it's, 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 it'd be half, it's just because be 50, it's just a spring it, load. It won't be 50,000, it'll be 56 a ton. Right. It, it'd be 48,000 for the whole year, so it'll be right around 24 to haul what we have now. Um, to a landfill. I, I think my my way in on all this is the the time constraint makes the agri sludge in cooperation with Sutherland look good in the short term and allow us, I guess for the back of a lack of a better term, a year to see if we can investigate either a, we drop it off at your site and the farmer plows it in, which I, I'm, I'm okay with that if we can solve the how, how they want to do it and if Sutherland or Carr or another farmer says, I've got the, I've got the stuff the EPA needs for that, or maybe, maybe we do take it back in house and we focus on hiring an employee in some way, shape or form, whether it's a regular employee that's also a farmer, kind of like, what we had before. Right. That also, uh, from my phone call with you, my discussions with you, one of the other things is you're also <laughs> educating yourself and getting yourself into the place where Nate was Correct. when it comes to the oversight and the sampling of the program. Correct. And I think Agri Sludge takes some of that temporarily off your hands as well. In the end, though, throughout the year, I'd like to. If we go that route, I'd like the committee to, to maybe hone in on, hey, maybe we want to pay a, pay a farmer and we identify a farmer, and that, and that is where we go. In the meantime, barring some type of catastrophic situation, we at least have agri-sludge under contract to land apply it, which is best for me. I think the Sutherland news is great. It is. It, mm -hmm. it is. That's kind of a game changer. That, 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 that's a big game changer. Could, and I think that's awesome. So, I, just a quick question on that idea. This is not an exclusive contract. This is a no. thousand thousand ton, up to well, it says approximately a thousand wet tons. Correct. And that's what you're generating basically per year. Correct. That's your estimate. So, my it opinion would be, be change this to some other number. Maybe it's five hundred tons. Maybe it's three hundred tons with the ability to add tonnage to that and that way they could this could be a supplement i guess as you're saying tim something that we can work with them to say okay we need you guys to help us on months i don't know march through june and then we can let the farmer do what he's going to do and then again this is going to sound stupid because i'm not a farmer so i don't know when you apply and when you don't apply but um you know and get something where this is a supplemental kind of contract 
that they help with that, but they help land apply. And until we get our feet back under us on on um, being able to be farmers or to be applicators. My, and, and my question about that would be, would Agri Sludge's contract change significantly in dollar amounts if we want to go that route? So I spoke with, uh, his name's Tom from Agri Sludge, and he is extremely flexible in this. He is not an exclusive thing. He would offer a lower rate per wet ton if we wanted him just to haul to the fields for us. Uh, I think he said he'd even come down to $15 a wet ton if, if we were just hauling him because he didn't have to mobilize the equipment. He's very, very flexible with this. The, the appealing thing to me with this was, like you said, we lost the operator and the orchestrator of the program and trying to, like, we're trying to get our feet back under us again. So having someone uh, like AgriSludge who has a good reputation with the EPA was appealing to me to learn under and uh, then possibly bring it back into house. The other thing that made me lean towards AgriSludge was the misunderstanding with, uh, with Mr. Sutherland and, and the, the lack of communication. So I didn't know un until you said that you had talked to him, I didn't know anything about that, uh, that he was still interested. And I also didn't know that uh, those were the fields that AgriSludge set up and those would be the fields that he would be going to. Yeah, so that's why when I talked to him, he, he called Mr. Sutherland and that's, that's how that came about. So, uh, so there's a lot that, that I'm still learning in the uh, transition process of it. No problem. But, um, but yeah, so that's... So, so Andy, would your suggestion be that we contact them and, and, I, and keeping in mind that I think we want to talk about this item, if not, I think at the next council meeting, is that your plan? That would be nice. If we don't do it at the next council meeting, we'll have about a week if it's decided on on the 18th uh, before we have to do something. And that would be a resolution to approve the contract. Do you, it, is your suggestion that we keep it at 1,000 or that we drop it to 600? Okay. My first suggestion would be, and I'm willing to facilitate this, talk with Terry. What's Terry willing to do? What can Terry do right now? Can he come get, can he come truck it? And what price would he have to truck it? That'd be my first, that'd be the first thing, because that sounds like our number one prime issue right now is you are running out of storage space. Right. Right. So we got to get it out of the storage, storage um, facility. I would agree. And if he and if he agrees to have it put on his property, so so that is absolutely the first step, right? And right. if he agrees to have it put on his property, we buy ourselves three weeks or something. Hmm. Three months. Three, three months. Sorry, three months. We buy yeah, ourselves yeah. three months. So and then and then we can talk about then we talk uh, then I think the next step is okay. Well, who's the who's the applicator? Is it Terry? Is it us? Is it AgriSludge? Is how does that work? You know, we need somebody who is a good reputation, right. who's not going to mess it up. Right. Um, obviously, we've got some we've got some equipment issues. If we've got a spreader that's got some problems, yeah, if right. it's us, we don't right. have to address that. Um, if we got if Terry's equipment can do it, maybe he can do it. Maybe it's AgriSludge. But I think that's step one, step two, and then the final step, in my opinion, is. You amend this to be something like 350 tons, where it's the it's the last ditch effort. Hey, if if we can't, if Terry's truck breaks down or we can't get someone, up, this is a this is a fail safe for getting rid of the material that's going to be six months down the line, essentially. And I think where I'm at is I'd rather see this contract get executed to make sure that we don't run into the. I mean, let's. Terry can say yes, but I think there's still more coordination that's got to take place. But my, my question would be, and I'm not arguing with you, Tim. I'm just say, saying, if you if they only provided service for 200 tons, right? Say everything else worked out great, and they put you now have a contract that said you're going to approximately a thousand tons. There's damages. There could be damages that they. And I'm not. I don't know Todd, and I I. Again, I don't want to. I, I I have a conflict with this anyhow, but. Right. They may come back and say, "Hey, we signed a contract with you. We put, we allotted so much of our capacity to you, and you didn't fulfill that." That's why I'm just trying. I'd rather go small with the ability to add on, rather than go big and not um, supply the amount. So with with that with that, keeping in mind that my that the my I guess our main goal or what I think our main goal should be is to make sure that we have a contract that this group feels comfortable with being voted on on Monday if Sutherland says yes. 
whether Sutherland says, yes, I'll do it all, or whether Sutherland just says, yep, you can use my field, and then tell me what you need, and I'll start working towards, towards that. What I kind of don't want to get into a situation is we hang our hats on, I think I can do that, and then it falls apart and we have no contract, and then we're just calling them up for a one-time shot. My, my goal would be to say, and this is hypothetical, but a 300 ton contract with the ability to add on another 300 tons and another 300 tons by the, you know, you could, you could do increments. We have the ability to add, and it sounds like they were at least flexible yeah, to flexible. do what we wanted. So, so I, I'd be concerned about signing a thousand ton. Okay. Or so, maybe you so sign something that says up to a thousand tons, but this one right here says approximately a thousand tons, which means 900 to... So, so, so to me, that sounds like a, like a like a two pronged attack coming out of here, and it, it's going to probably fall on you to make sure that that contract language would change to what Andy just said. At the same time, confirm with Sutherland. I'd love to get a rate schedule from if they're going to if they're willing to give us a rate schedule for right. installing. Great, or just applying. Great. I mean, I'd love to see those in the contract so we could almost have a menu of what we wanted to pick. You mean those those rates from Agri Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And that's those the most helpful to us. I think at that point I would be comfortable voting on it yeah. Monday. I, the point is extremely well taken that you know I, whether it's three with an additional series of threes or you know um, um, up to up to and that way I would feel comfortable telling council these are the changes we made. You you looked at these. Um, you, you looked at this with Agri Sludge and they did modify their contract. We're under a little bit of a time crunch. The ultimate goal, however, is to either take it back in house or possibly give, give some money to a farmer and have a farmer uh, apply it. We'll be moving towards that solution. I, I like both those. I like that idea. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm good with that. Is that okay. something you think you can? Yeah, yeah we, we definitely. I think changing it to up to is, is a, a very simple uh, approach that that uh, I think he'll be flexible with. I almost wonder if, if we used him as an emergency, if we could hire him as a one-time service and not need a contract, I, I would ask him that, because that's what we've done for a landfill, when it's, we just ask So him. I was gonna ask that question, what are you guys paying for time to take to the landfill right it's now? The 56. It's that number? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And you were, said you were having him haul to the field uh, previously? Yes. And uh, what was his number to haul to the I field? Don't, I don't know okay. uh, what they, what It'd be, I'd be interested to see what they yeah. may have Hold it in the past to the field. Too. So I know when I talked to him this time, he said he would drop the price all the way down to fifteen, uh, fifteen dollars a ton to haul. It'd be good to have that kind of menu uh, that you could call yeah. for a per service um, right. kind of lineup. And you know, from AgriSludge's point of view, this is good business. You know, if in, in essence, if, if something were to fall apart and they needed, we needed them to come in. This is this is good business for them. Right. So just make sure that I'm clear in the. You, you'd like the menu in the contract uh, spelled out. Each, each item. I would want it as much as uh, I don't. Has has Brian looked at this? Yes, this uh, is the the version that he. So I guess my gut feeling is I wouldn't want it changed so much that Brian can't review it before Monday, but having the price per trip, just hauling it, right. added to it, I don't think that would change the contract significantly, right. and I don't think dropping it to up to a thousand. Right. Right. would change it significantly and I think we would have, I mean of course he'll, you can tell him uh, that doesn't give you a ton of time you almost have to like send it to him Friday right right um, with that said um, in the end I do like the idea of a, a la carte and I hate to use that term with the substance um, you know kind of a, a pick and choose and maybe AgriSludge is willing to do that for us in the future, and we maintain a, a regular kind of backup contract. Who knows, maybe the farmer's truck hauling truck breaks. He's ready to put it on. I know from talking to you that there are a lot of other, a lot of, it sounds like simple, and I don't think any of the three of us think it's simple, but it's not as simple as, okay, bring it on out here and put it on the field. It's, there's, you know, you have to, you have, the farmer has to say, okay, today, and we have to have Agri Sludge ready to take it today. And, and I realize that Agri Sludge does some of that inherently when they take it off. 
So there'll have to be a lot more coordination that takes place between the farmer and making sure. And then I think we'll probably have to, I would want, whether it's me as the chair or anybody else as the chair, as we move into a phase that utilizes a farmer to do all of it, if we can find one to do it, to make certain that we have safeguards in place so they don't just go, well, I know it's supposed to rain, but right. oh, they sell their property or something happens crazy. Yeah. Right, right. So, but but that's down the road. I want to make sure we address this, and I think those will. If you if you can, think I can I can definitely get that done. Okay, yep. absolutely. Good solution, gentlemen. Good with it. You got my vote. Okay, or your abstention is the case. Well, my vote on this solution. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, with that said, we have uh, we're cranking out to one hour and 10 minutes and I don't have anything else on the agenda, do you? I did have one more thing I wanted to say, just informational real quick about the phosphorus removal. Uh, I've been doing more research, uh, learning about that process. And when I was explaining it earlier, uh, I said that the we need a high DO for the bugs, the microbes to remove the phosphorus. Uh, it's a little bit more fine tuned than that. The When we're in a low DO zone with no oxygen, they will switch and burn the phosphorus off for energy. But they won't absorb any more phosphorus unless they're in a high oxygen zone. So what this, these upgrades would do is give the outer ring of our ditch would have no oxygen in it. They would burn off all the phosphorus they have. The inner tube with the generation would have a lot of oxygen in it. They'd absorb as much phosphorus as they could. We'd pump them back to the front and then they, they would uh, burn it off there again. So, so a little um, tweak on, on what I said before as, I, as I'm learning more about the process. So. Just appreciate, that out there. appreciate the input. Thank you. With that said, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Kathy, can I have the roll? Hicken? Yes. Lane? Yes. Walter? Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Yep. Good meeting. Thank you. Sorry to run, but I gotta go. Tommy's <coughs> out. Let me tell you what that. Yeah, I will.